Following the festivities of Christmas in the year 1898, the disappearance of three siblings became one of the most grisly and infamous murders in Australian history. Tonight on Dark Curiosities, The Gatton Tragedy. Nearing the turn of the century, Gatton was an ever-growing village located in the southeast of Queensland, Australia, state capital Brisbane lying to the east and Toowoomba to the west. It was a pleasant and peaceful settlement of almost 500 and quite a young town. Blackfellows Creek lay eight miles from Gatton and was where the Murphy family farm was located. Daniel and Mary Murphy were parents to ten children. Daniel, Michael, John, Jeremy, Patrick, William, Polly, Nora, Catherine and Teresa, who is also known as Ellen. Daniel Jr. and Michael had already left home, Michael working at a government experimental farm in Westbrook and Daniel secured work as a police constable in Brisbane. On the 26th of December, Michael returned to the farm for his Christmas holidays. Later in the same day, Michael borrowed a one-horse sulky cart from his brother-in-law, William Menil, to transport his sisters, 27-year-old Nora and 19-year-old Ellen. The trio were set to attend a dance which was being held at the Division Board Hall in Gatton. However, during the outward journey, Michael received word that the dance had been cancelled. He turned the sulky back around and the siblings began their way home. The next morning, the Murphys awoke to discover that Michael, Nora and Ellen had not returned to the creek. Mary Murphy asked her son-in-law, William, to go and search for her missing children. William rode out upon his horse, eager to trace them. The sulky that had belonged to him that he had given to the siblings had a wobbly wheel which left a distinctive track along the Tent Hill Road on the way to Gatton. He noticed that the tracks veered off into a wooded pasture, however William initially didn't find anything suspicious. Whilst riding further into a winding trail of scrubland, William finally saw a glimpse of the Murphy siblings. He saw the trio on the ground ahead and he assumed that they were innocently sleeping. As he approached, the truth became devastatingly clear. In a stomach-turning twist, William witnessed ants crawling over the corpses of Ellen, Nora and Michael. At first, it appeared that they had all been bludgeoned to death. However, on further inspection, this did not seem to be the case. The crime scene was peculiar and harrowing. Michael and Ellen were lying back to back within a few feet of each other, Nora lying nearby on a neatly spread, blood-soaked rug. The sisters had their wrists tied by handkerchiefs and it appeared that Michael had his hands tied too at some point. However, at the crime scene itself, his hands were untied with a purse lying nearby. There is speculation as to who untied Michael. Some say Menil... Others say the killer. An enormously strange aspect of the crime scene was that all three siblings had their feet pointed to the west. This was the signature behaviour of the murderer and to this day has never been repeated. The suffering of the Murphy siblings became evident upon the publications of the post-mortem examinations. The siblings had all been killed between 10pm on the 26th of December and 4am on the 27th. Nora's skull had been so badly damaged that her brain protruded and it was found she had also been strangled. Ellen took several blows to the head and Michael had been shot in the head before being struck by a blunt instrument which actually disguised the bullet hole. The woman had also been raped possibly by the brass-mounted handle of a riding whip. The sulky faced south, forming a triangle. The horse still lay between the shafts and had, unfortunately, been shot in the head. William was distraught and raced back to Gatton upon his horse. He made a quick stop at the Brian Boru Hotel to notify patrons of the horrific murder before making his way to the police station. 
Complications arose from his visit to the hotel as many people rushed to the crime scene, contaminating evidence, and a breakdown in communication led to delays at the police station. Ultimately, the investigation was plagued by mistakes. Over 3,000 statements were taken by police, yet they struggled to find the murderer. There were whispers of disputes and incest among the family and other workers, claims which were never resolved. Many sleuths suspected a butcher who was seen lurking in the area on the night of the murders. The man was known as Theo Farmer, Thomas Ferner and Thomas Day. A few weeks prior to the Murphy murders, a 15-year-old boy named Alfred Stephen Hill was killed nearby in Oxley. His pony was also shot in the same manner as the Murphys. In 1900, Thomas Day, using the alias Thomas Ferner, was admitted to Sydney Hospital where he took his own life by a self-inflicted bullet wound. Most intriguingly, Day had, according to rumour, left behind a suicide note, claiming he was indeed present at the crime scene and witnessed the murders of Michael, Nora and Ellen, and that he had recurring nightmares of seeing their heads being repeatedly bashed in. It is not known whether Thomas was solely responsible for their deaths, or if he was purely a witness, or quite possibly an accomplice to whoever stole the innocent lives of the Murphy siblings. Police, however, had no evidence to back this up. The slayings of Michael, Nora and Ellen Murphy left a huge hole in the hearts of the Murphy family and the small, tight-knit community surrounding them. One night changed their lives forever and the party or parties responsible were never identified or brought to justice. Over a century later, many unanswered questions remain, and the mysterious and spine-chilling case remains one of Australia's most haunting unsolved crimes.